ito po ang inyong lingkod, Tita Sure Manuel. And of course, I'm so proud to tell you that right now, nagpapatuloy pa rin po tayo sa ating mga ginagampanan na mga media and productions. And uh, of course, nasa filmmaking din tayo. And speaking of productions, nice ko kayong inyayahan dito sa aming Supreme Productions. Dahil po dito sa Supreme Productions, marami po tayo ditong mga ginagampanan. Kasama po dito ang pagde-develop ng talent. So, dito lang po yan matatagpuan sa Brick Road. Huwag niyong kakalimutan, Supreme Productions. For all your dreams to come true, why don't you join and see Supreme Productions for yourself? Again, the place is at Santa Lucia Mall here in Cainta. Thank you. The views and opinions expressed by the host do not necessarily state or reflect those of the company and its management. Furthermore, the views and opinions of the guests do not reflect the host, the show, the management, and this station. Hi there, everyone. Hi, hello. It's a Friday. So we'll have the Friday edition of Special People. Okay, so uh, as usual po, um, may mga pagkakataon that I'm alone. <laughs> I don't have a guest. Although I, what I know is I've tried to invite some women who I met yesterday and I told them to join me in this program, Special People. Okay, so to start with, we only have but a few days to go before election. As a matter of fact, Today being Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, will be the last day of, uh, you know, campaign. What we call the traditional campaign. We're in, I don't know, for some parties, I believe they have already had their, um, what you call, meeting de avance. They say that the, the, well, the gauge or the measurement whether a candidate is going to make it to the position is during the well what you call meeting the avance because that's when we will see the actual number of people gathered in that meeting the avance and we will know by then how you know the candidate is how's the stand of that candidate before the voting populace we we have in the philippines right now we have some presidential candidate and uh, well some of them do not believe in surveys and according to surveys alam naman natin yan for the past months we've been following the surveys of the pulse asia we have other um survey groups and there was a uh, mention of the leading candidate but now i think some uh, well publications are claiming that that's no longer true or something like uh there was already a point where in um medyo nalagpasan na siya ng ating kalaban or ang kalaban na number two supposedly so the big question mark though is akala ko ba the percentage of the survey says this is the you know the margin it's more than half. So, how come in a matter of uh, one, two, three days? Pero ako, I can make some analysis and evaluation. And in fact, for today, in my program, Special People, I'll make special mention of the people, though they're not here with me, but I consider them special in their own ways. Okay, this is a friend, not really a dear, dear friend, but somebody I met just before the campaign period of 2016 and i'm referring of course to brother john castellones okay brother john castellones is right now running a senator and he is number 13 sa balota po so it's always important that we know the number that's the reason why, in fact, today, there's a guest that we have here. I would have wanted to also interview him because he's supposed to be somebody who filed 
a mayoralty bid in Manila. And his name is Francis Pizarro. And uh, what I do know is that he was with us at the Labor Party Philippines. And he was supposed to be there. And um, he should have been a candidate, an official candidate. Because I do believe that some, some of the... I would say some of the candidates we have were all chosen after some meetings with the officers of the Labour Party. I, for one, I take pride in saying that I'm a member of the Labour Party Philippines. It used to be called Workers and Peasants Party. Okay, Workers and Peasants Party. So, similar to labor, but the the thing there is that now the word labor has, you know, some other people, some connotations would be like, you know, vigilant labor groups. No, no, it's not that. When we say labor, we're talking to the workers. We're talking about workers. Okay, so I'm speaking this way because I do believe that this particular episode will uh, somehow reach some of our dear friends outside of the Philippines because what we're doing right now is we're testing the market for the worldwide market of Elizalde Broadcasting. Why a worldwide market? We know that we're using the internet platform. We have a Facebook Live and we also have YouTube. So what we're going to do is give it a try. Let's give it a try reaching out not necessarily to the foreigners maybe to our you know uh, fellow filipinos who may be outside of our country as a matter of fact some of them who we call the absentee voters are the ofws the people who were out there and they're with the um you know different different uh, places and they're doing their job as overseas filipino workers ofw of course, don't mistake us for party list because if uh, speaking of party list, here's a party list that I wish to explain about. It's called uh, it's number one six nine, and um, I don't know how to call them. Uh, what I heard is they said it's the voice of the senior citizens, or in Filipino, it's called tinig na mga senior citizens. So okay, so what? am i doing here am i speaking to you like a candidate a candidate of um, council being a councillor of Quezon city in the third district no um honestly i did also file that's why i could relate with our guest here our, our person here in our office his name is francis pisara and he uh, joined uh labor party philippines way back so we were talking about it and we we see some sort of a common denominator number one he filed for his candidacy it was accepted by comelec because that's what comelec would normally do they would accept the uh well your certificate of candidacy provided that you could fill in all the blanks there are spaces that you have to fill in and they will ask you for a notarized copy of your um, you will have to submit that actually which i also did okay what is the difference number one he filed in manila so he didn't file only as a counselor he filed as a mayoralty candidate so which means it was easy for me to trace through my friend christian gravador thank you so much for the information christian christian was also the guy who told me that my name was found there it's number 15 that was the only time that i realized hey i'm still in the run i'm still running but according to my partners um raymar gutierrez Crystal Ives, that we we are no longer uh, we don't need to file a withdrawal, but we are no longer official candidates because there was a mistake, and the mistake was we were actually given Kona by a vice president for Visayas. Okay, so what's the implication there? 
number one, I think I'd like to confess to you that my this is not my first time to file a candidacy for council. As a matter of fact, in the year um, 1999, I think, I, I believe, I also ran for council with um, then former Congressman, Congressman Dante Liban. Dante Liban was running as mayoralty opposed to Rudy Fernandez, the late Rudy Fernandez, who was an actor. He was an actor who wanted to be in the politics as well. So he joined that particular politics, running as mayor from way back. And he was uh, opposed to Sunny Belmonte. Okay, where do I come into the picture? Someone uh, approached me and told me that um, if I'm running for council and would like to join the party of Dante Liban, who at the time was congressman planning to run, planning to run for um, mayoralty, and he wanted a ticket. And the, uh, I was one supposed to be, we were six candidates. And um, aside from me, I have a colleague. Her name is Mares Ruby de Ocampo. And she was also going to run for council. So we considered that challenge at the time. When we considered the challenge, what we did was to also file for our own candidacy. But we were in a party with former Congressman Dante Liban. So this is what happened. We, we were running as a party. We would go to places, mount our own, you know, campaign uh, caravan and... And there was also this uh, going up the stage and, sp and speaking with other candidates. We called it a candidates forum. So we would meet up with the other candidates and we would try to convince the voters that we were qualified enough to run for the positions we were running for. Okay, so at that time... Never did I even imagine that I was going to be one one hot candidate because I, I wasn't really that prepared. But not as ill-prepared as this time, year 2022. The story this year, okay, last year, October, was the day where we submit our certificate of candidates, our candidacy. And uh, we had then, at the time, we had... Attorney Joe Malvar Villegas and Attorney Joe Malvar Villegas at the time was really preparing for a group who will lead the campaign in Quezon City. So when he did call me and he asked me whether I was interested, I even kidded him and I said, yes, why not? I'm interested. I even want to be the mayor of Quezon City. But of course, that was a big joke. I wasn't intending to run as mayor. In fact, even running as a council councilor would have been a joke because I'm already in my late age. I'm finally a senior citizen. I would remember. I remember that time that the former congressman, Arquisa, was now uh, again in the running, but uh, his party list number is 169. But at that time, he was the lone congressman for the senior citizen. And I happen to be a friend of our dear George Banal. George Banal is actually a counselor. Right now, he is a counselor of the 3rd District of Quezon City and running again, this time for a re-election and for council. So I even met up with him after I already filed my candidacy and told him, uh, pare, I, I call him pare because we're compadres, no? He is, of course, the sponsor, one of the sponsors for my daughter's wedding. So I told him, Pare, I'm no, no longer running. I only filed because according to Attorney Villegas, when we are official candidates, we'll be given a chance to speak, to go to forums. We can be invited by other, you know, uh, groups so that we will be able to present our platform. But in reality, what we wanted to do it was, was to be up close and personal with the other candidates. So anyway, um, George Banal, at the time that uh, former Congressman Arquisa, now running again as uh, Congressman, 
we know that he was the first and only congressman during the time. And he was, of course, already representing the senior citizens. And at that time, uh, this was, uh, they were lobbying for what now we call as RA-9994, which I believe was approved, if I'm not mistaken, sometime February of that year, uh, 2016, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, the, the date, I'm, I'm not so sure as to the year itself, but I would remember why it's different because um, we were already enjoying discounts or i mean the senior citizens were already enjoying discounts for food restaurants and all but uh one thing was lacking when it came to the vat or the vat exemptions what what was happening then would be we deduct 20 percent of the the amount that you're supposed to pay minus or you have to pay first the taxes or something like that but with the new ra9994 that that would be it would mean that you're vat exempt as well so you're now gonna enjoy not only 20 percent but a little over 35 percent something like that or maybe around that uh, 32 percent something but anyway the bottom line is that that's when I, I really saw from the first time then Congressman Godofredo Arquisa. Then the next election came. Yes, this second election that came, of course, I remember. I believe that that was when the Mayan party list, where I would have been a part of the nominees. And then Senator uh, Ernesto Herrera, a former Senator Ernesto Herrera even asked me if I was serious about running because I'm supposed to be only the third nominee of that party list that's called the Mayan party list and he was telling me that I could help you I could help finance your campaign and all but I uh, choose to be the number two nominee instead of number three okay I uh, well I was just laughing it off because at the time I wasn't really serious about being a part of the party list so what happened then was that that particular party list was disqualified okay now let's talk about disqualifications uh, of course you have the right when you are considered disqualified you have the right to file for a motion for reconsideration so i think they were not processed they were trying to file for that or they did file maybe but the bottom line is i'm going, going to connect it right now because right now we know of some candidates who were denied the official candidacy or um, they were never given any numbers that's the problem so the problem is when you don't have a number how could you comp uh, how could you campaign and because you don't have a number you also could not be voted because we know very well that right now you know to be voted is that there's a circle right beside your name if you're a senatorial candidate or or yeah mayoralty candidate whatever there's a circle that you have to shade dark shade or black maybe whatever pen till pen whatever you, they call it that you will have to shade it so without a number could you just imagine how you could be elected you can never be elected without a number because it's like this the very first time i ran it's 1987 after the long years of martial law and then there came the people power and the very first election 1987 almost everybody wanted to run and experience how it is again to have elections so i was one of them i was a radio announcer with dwad so what i decided to do was to file my candidacy and at that time there's no such thing as uh, you know what we call now as uh, well for for you know elections where you are just going to shade your name and all that what we were having then was you know people writing your name in the ballot so you have an official ballot and that official ballot 
if you have electorates who cannot even spell your name, then sorry to say you may not be elected because if the watcher or the teacher who reads the actual ballot, if he, she cannot read the name, then that would be a stray vote. And uh, like, for example, in my case, they could not identify whether the resurrection was my family name or the resurrection was my first name. So whenever that would come out, they wouldn't know whether to consider it a vote or they will just make it a straight, a stray vote, a stray vote, they call it. Why? Because there was a candidate who also filed for candidacy and his name was, I believe, Manuel Cabuhay or Manuel Cabigting, something like that. So that was a dilemma. Because whenever the family name Manuel would come out, or the name Manuel would come out, then the watchers will protest that. And they don't want it to be, you know, counted as my vote. But my family name was Manuel, and it should have been counted because it's the family name that matters. Well, so much so for that, because right now, that's not the kind of election we're having we're having the smartmatic way of electing your candidate and that's why it's important that you have a number because if you don't have a number how will they even you know elect you or your name may not be appearing there because if if you're, you're you don't have a number that means you don't have a, you don't have a name in the list okay so i'm making that very very clear because it's a matter of days now and okay but just the same i'd like to mention that my name in the list is uh well in the list it's number 15. it's number 15. okay win or lose i don't i don't really care but as long as you please give it a try with the persons i mentioned to you we have candidates we have a senatorial candidate in the person of John, brother John Castellanos, he's actually a lawyer. Uh, he was uh, an undersecretary, I believe, during the time that uh, the president, President Duterte, was newly uh, installed as president. Then, brother John Castellanos became an undersecretary for the uh, local governments. Uh, how do you call that? Right now, uh, after a few uh, uh, a few months later, he became a DAR secretary, Department of Agrarian Reform, and that's what I'm reading most here. The things that he has accomplished during that time, and he has given out 516 hectares of land. He has also given out 18.7 billion of pesos. For financial assistance to agrarian reform farmers nationwide. Also, there was a budget of 450 million pesos for the farmers during the COVID 19 pandemic. See, that's the reason why our heart fell for him. We, we were so amazed at the things he's been doing during pandemic. And this was one of them. He distributed also through DAR, the what you call the DAR to door program. And this was actually uh, distribution ceremonies during that time. And they wanted, you know, zero backlog of agrarian reform cases, 600,000 housing units, appointments of regular employees, and of course the ISO certification secured for the DAR central office at the regional offices and provincial offices. So these are just but a few of the accomplishments as a DAR secretary by now our candidate number 13 for Senate, Brother John Castrichones. Okay, as to our dear congressman, man, dear... Uh, Mr. Senior Citizen himself, Attorney Godofredo V. Arquisa, a CPA. Actually, just to give you a bird's eye view, he was already the member of the House of Representatives on the 14th and 15th Congress. He is by profession a CPA, meaning registered tax practitioner, a lawyer, a notary public, 
And to add to that, he's also a licensed real estate broker, a life insurance underwriter. He is a publisher because he publishes his own magazine or newspaper. He is an author and a printer. That's his business. He's a printer. And of course, he is a civic leader and a very much, um, uh, well, he is a family man, a very devout husband. And he is a Christian, a Baptist at that. So I just mentioned these two guys because these are the special people that I have in my heart right now. And with a few days to go before election, okay, I just go up to 1.30 today for the broadcast. I just wanted to say that with the remaining 10 minutes I have, I mentioned about myself. It's also telling the truth about the number that I am. But, you know, I hardly would be able to go around. I have 37 barangays to cover. My district has 37 barangays. I wanted so much. Actually, at the time that I filed for the candidacy, I was imagining, okay, on this weekend, I'll go to at least four barangays. One in the morning. And then near noon, near noon time, I should be in another barangay. And then after lunch, I would be in another barangay. So if I had all those four every weekends, then maybe by December or January, I must have already covered the barangays under the district, which is District 3. But fate didn't allow me to do that. As a matter of fact, um, all of a sudden, there were other callings. And one of them is that we wanted to help a senatorial candidate. The guy who issued us our CONA, he was a senatorial candidate and he was offering a lot, offering to the point of even saying that he'd put up a TV station for us. We will be coming up with a TV station. Uh, he will finance it, but who will be running it? Me and my partner, Raymar Gutierrez. But then didn't push through. As a matter of fact, nothing pushed through because instead, I allowed him to know about Elizalde Broadcasting. I only joined Elizalde February of this year when I decided I, I don't want to be partners anymore with some of my partners. I also have a corporation called the Best Partner Corporation. Now, I, I cannot call it a best partner corporation because I don't even see my partner. <laughs> and my partner seems to be also engaged in other things. As a matter of fact, he did file for a candidacy, and that's for being a senator. But unfortunately for him, he was considered a nuisance candidate for the Senate. So I'm, I'm just trying to give you a background and tell you where I am right now. Again, um, my colleagues, my friends, well, if you at least would still find time and you are from District 3 and you can put there my name, thank you so much. No, I mean, encircle my name, number 13. But, no, I'm sorry, I'm number 15. The, the guy who's number 13 is John Castrichones. So I'm telling you this because I know that we need men like him in the Senate. We, me we, we need men who can express themselves as, you know, senators should really express themselves. He knows the laws, he, especially when it comes to agrarian laws. So I do believe that he deserves a seat in the Senate. And I have other friends, to be honest with you. In my role before as a producer, a television producer, and even a movie producer, but for being a television producer, I did have a show before, which I, you know, I dedicated to mothers, and I called it Dear Mom. And in that program, I had the former Senator Lauren Legarda, and she's running again now. And I'm not saying anything. It's, it's really up to you. You've seen her when she was a senator, and then she became also a con congresswoman. But on my part, let me tell you that I express this kind of um, gratitude. Because at the time, she was a very young uh, senator, and I was also a young producer. And I asked her if she could be featured in my TV show called Dear Mom. I just find it ironic now because I was, in fact, 
listening yesterday to some people talking outside and also reading and all that I saw that um, I guess one of her children but I'm sure it's a son and not a daughter because I know that he's got two sons because the two sons also appeared in my TV special so I just would like to express this now you were one of the sons at that time you were just kids I, I wouldn't call you toddlers because you were already swimming in the pool. As a matter of fact, we took shots of you while you are in the pool. And we know that your mom, as early as then, was already a senator. Now, now that you are grown-ups, you have your own businesses, is it really, you know, nice for you to just talk to your mom like that and say you are trying to disown her because of her decision to run? under a certain presidential or vice presidential that you don't approve of why that's my big question because as a mother and if you must know this sunday it's a mother's day same day that i produced that program dear mom and you were featured there because of your mom so i'm just telling you that and also well of course i also had tessie oreta tessie oreta aquino tessie aquino oreta Tessie Aquino Oreta, she was also one of those featured in that program. And of course, my dear comadre, Nikki Coseteng. So, uh, right now, I believe that my comadre, Nikki Coseteng, is no longer in the limelight when it comes to politics because she has her own school. She's now more on the academe. And um, yes, together with her, I also had friends like George Banal, who is still my compadre right now. The former Senator Ernesto Herrera. And of course, I have great, great uh, friends who became also my Ninong in my own way. We, of course, we know, and I won't have to campaign for him. His name is Gringo Nasan. He's there. So thank you so much, Gringo. And then the wife of one running right now for Senate is uh, the former mayor, or the former vice president, Jojo Binay. And at the time, it was not Jojo Binay that I had. It was uh, the wife, Mrs. Elenita Binay, or Doctora, sorry. She was Doctor. She is Doctora Elenita Binay. So these were people who, in my way up there, while I was in the process of wanting to be a producer, as a matter of fact, uh, it's not just a Filipino-produced films. We also did movies made here in the Philippines but shown outside and even garnered awards. And these were done right here in the Philippines, dubbed in English so that, you know, uh, people around could watch it. So uh, we have one which is the unveiling of Demon Horse. Or in Tagalog, it's called Tikbalang. Okay. And it's garnered a lot of awards already. So, okay. Again, I'm saying this. I'm telling you guys that win or lose this time. And I'm all prepared. Whoever becomes president, whoever becomes vice president, even in my own city, which I love so much, Quezon City, but of course, my heart goes for the lady mayor right now because she is also a friend, Joy Belmonte. And um, her dad, the former congressman, in fact, speaker of the house, Sunny Belmonte, has helped me in a way when I became publisher by allowing himself to be the cover story of our magazine. This is called the uh, Prime News Magazine. And of course, um, Sunny Belmonte also helped me in my 1987 bid for the council in the same manner that Dante Liban has also helped. So, okay, I'm saying this because I say, I always say it as a joke, but I mean it. Three years is just around the corner. Whatever happens this time, of course, this is national election. And in three years' time, it's not going to be a national election. But there will be a chance for people to join in the party list, provided, of course, that the party list would still continue. And I would say that I may offer myself to be a nominee of any party list that would surely serve not only 
the senior citizens and the elderly, but also women. So with that, I'd like to say our president, our dear president, Jesusa Raiz, and uh, better half, former mayor Robinson Raiz, and Joy Raiz Noon, who was interviewed just the other day, or I think yesterday, let me tell you that as the National Vice President for AWESCOP, I would surely embrace whoever the rightful officials that will be elected. But let me tell you that we will take an active part in bringing AWESCOP into the map of the entire world by having a worldwide AWESCOP. What we mean to say is that if you are a woman, and you're between the ages of 35 to beyond because when you say seniors it's 60 years old and beyond if you can reach 100 that's so much the better so i say that these are the very people that i'd like to serve in the future so do stand by for more announcements but it's a promise so edwin de Gampatan, the composer who did the song for senior citizen he told me that if we could work in advance preparing for programs for senior senior citizens yes we'll do that our dear uh, lady president of elizalde or the chief executive officer of elizalde is also a woman herself so we're eyeing on looking for women leaders women who can really you know bring our country and bring pride to our country and bring our fellow filipino citizens a uh, a rightful place in the sun a rightful place wherein we will be respected as filipinos let's not underestimate the talent and the skills of the filipinos that's all that i want to say for now and again let's look forward let's look forward to a clean an honest election this 2022. This is Rex Manswell saying bye for now in this program, special people, and we'll see each other again after the elections. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye.